We ask you, Lord, to hear us, and we pray thankfully. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. For that is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> Irene Pasi, Ketobne Mati, Eee, 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 Open noti, open sotini sos piachres, to ja presque pasine gona fer voice ne una fare eron. Af shop tenero fifty as were on of these, or then I went and chari et I own othai. And thof on marentioro for posen te fare eron. Hem piketh who I find him neo tiron tep and on. Hen hirini ni venin jaipi pantocrato, rep choice penoti. Bros <laughs> وفي كل حال 
لانك سترت عندنا وحفظتنا وبنت اليك اشفقت علينا عدتنا واتيت بنا الى هذه الساعه اطلبوا لكي يرحمنا الله ويترعف علينا ويسمعنا ويعيننا ويقبل سؤالات وطلبات كدسي منهم بالصلاح عنا في كل حين وأن يحفظ لنا وعلينا حياة وقيام أبينا المكرم الباب الأنبى تودرس الثاني وشريكه في الخدمة الرسولية أبينا الأسقف الأنبى إلوس ويغفر لنا خطايانا يا رب رحم For we ask and entreat your goodness, O lover of mankind, grant us to complete this holy night and all the days of our life in all peace, with your fear, all envy, all temptation, all the work of Satan, the counsel of the wicked, the rising up of enemies hidden and manifest, take them away from us and from all your people. And from this your holy place, grant us the endowments and benefactions as you have given us the authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and upon all the power of the enemy.
Loving fathers, dear sisters and brothers in Christ, I welcome you today to celebrate the third anniversary of the establishment of the Diocese of London and also to mark the third anniversary of the proclamation of His Eminence Amber Angelus as the Bishop of London. A lot has been done in the last three years, uh, but I'm going to mention a few verses to summarize uh, part of we, what we have done, what been done the last three years. First verse I would like to quote here from the Psalm 126, which says, the Lord has done great things for us and we are glad. Many things happen to make us happy and glad and have joy. But this year in particular, we have two major events. The first one was the ordination of two blessed priests to serve the Diocese of London, uh, Abuna Michael and Abuna Anthony. And they are great asset to the diocese and the service of diocese. And also they are the first fruits of many ordination that Sayyidina ordained for many ordinations to come. And they've been uh, ord ordained in the Feast of the Apostles this year. So we congratulate them and we wish them a faithful and a grateful, fruitful service. Also, there is a, another event really, which we bought at the diocese, the convent in Brentree. And there's a, a story behind this convent. This story started when his eminence, Evangelos, had got an email from the nuns. They saying that they are going to go back to Ireland and they want you know, the Coptic church if you are interested to buy this place. And this is, you know, if you look at it, why they approached the church? But again, there is a story behind that. One of these nuns was serving in Alexandria, but you know, in the 70s. And really, they wanted the, the Coptic church to buy this uh, uh, convent. And they approached Ambangelus and God provided everything, was plan, God's plan to have it. And everything went, and even for the money, collecting the money, donation, we, you know, been, the money was being uh, collected and fundraising this money in a year and all being paid. And this shows us the work of God. And interestingly enough, when we went the first time, it was the first uh, of October 19th. 2019, when Amber Angelus said we will have a clergy meeting there, and then we are going into the uh, uh, convent, and then this nun said, so Abuna Antonio said, Abuna Antonios, and she hugged him, she knew him since he was serving Alexandria, and again and again we can see God's hand and God's work in uh, 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 this service. And here I can really uh, say that the power behind the success and the power behind uh, what is happening is God himself, his hand. And here I remember this verse from the book of Nehemiah, who says, the kings granted them to me according to the good hand of my God upon me. Everything we have according to the good hand of our Lord on us. And one of these gifts and one of the gifts of God granted us his eminence and Bangalos to serve and to be the first bishop of this diocese. And here really, uh, I say that God planned that and had this plan. And he is giving us him as a gift to the diocese with his vision and leadership. And I put here a verse from the book of Jeremiah. I will give you shepherds according to my heart who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. But also, this success, again, it needs you know, us to respond to the uh, call of God and the work which God wants us to do. And that's what Sayyidina is doing. And I, again here I can say this success from God, but again, there's you know, a help from him and telling us work, and the more you work, the more I will support and help. And this reminds me what is said about Joseph in the book of Genesis. The Lord was with Joseph, and he was a successful man. 
and also about Joseph again. It is written in the same chapter of the book of Genesis, chapter 39. The Lord was with him, and whatever he did, the Lord made it prosper. And we can see that. So thank God for supporting Sayyidina to have this vision and to uh, uh, serve faithfully. So thank you, Sayyidina, for your fatherhood, for your great, faithful, and tireless service. May the Lord continue to support you and serve us for uh, his glory and keep you for us for many, many years to come. But also we have gifted another gift, which is our father, the priests who are serving the diocese. And this is something, you know, again, I have to mention here with their faithful and dedicated service, the service is going and uh, is successful service and their love to the service and love to each other. This is something, again, is very obvious in their service. And here again, I will quote what David the prophet said in the psalm that they are working in unity together. And he said, behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. And that's what we see in our fathers in their clergy meeting and in their service working together in unity for the glory of God. And last but not least, God blessed and granted this diocese a blessed congregation. Through their love to Christ and their church and his church and their love to each other, they are serving and serving as one body of Christ in harmony, fulfilling what St. Paul said to the Romans in his epistle to the Romans. And this was St. Paul saying here, for as we have many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same function. So we being many are one body in Christ and individual, individually members of one another, having gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us. And everyone having gift given by God, serving and serving faithfully as this gift success to the service in general. So again, this is, you know, again, this is the congregation serving, being, you know, in, in, in this diocese. And at the end, I can say that they are working together as a group and having this motto, which again, uh, uh, Nehemiah said in the book of Nehemiah, the God of heaven himself will prosper us. Therefore, we, his servant, will arise and build. I conclude this saying that we thank God for this great service and we ask him to continue to help and support the service of these diocese and support Sayyidina and all those who are serving the diocese <clears throat> through the intercession of Our Lady Virgin Mary, through the intercession of all the heavenly choir and heavenly hosts and through the prayers of all the saints and prayer of His Holiness Pope Tawadro II and his partner, Apostolic Ministry, Amba Angelos. And now I uh, will introduce uh, our beloved father, Abuna Antonio Sabit. And we know Abuna Antonio, uh, he is the diocesan vicar general. So Abuna, uh, welcome to uh, the Thank you, Abuna Shnuda. I thank Allah for our على ترتيباته إلا رتب على الخدمة في لندن من أيام البابا كرولوس القديس الله ينيح روحه هو اللي ابتدى الخدمة وابتدى أرسال أباء كهنة والبابا شنودة كمل نمو الخدمة في لندن والبابا تادروس تابعها في فترة وجوده وربنا أراد أن البابا تادروس يرسم لنا الأنبا أنجيلوس كأسقف للندن الحقيقة يعني أيام خدمتي بحس في نوعين من الأباء الأسخفة في نوع من الأباء الأسخفة يحس, يحس أن الأسقفية سلطة وفي نوع يحس أن الأسقفية خدمة فالأنبا أنجيلوس اتعلم البابا شنودة القول الذهبي اللي قاله إذا تعب الأسقف استراح الشعب وإذا استراح الشعب إذا استراح الأسقف تعب الشعب 
فأنبا أنجيلوس الحقيقة زي ما بيقولوا بالعربي كده لا يألو جهدا على نفسه حتى يريح الشعب كميات الاجتماعات والافتقادات وزيارات الكنائس طبعا متعبة لكن هو كل حاجة بيستحملها بسرور وفرح و يعني زيارته لأبروشيات العالم كله تقريبا عمل زي النحلة اللي هو بتاخد الرحيق من كل زهرة وتيجي هنا تدينا العسل فاحنا هنا يعني بنتمتع بالعسل اللي أم أنجيلوس بيدهول العسل أبيض وإحنا واضح في علاقتنا به كأباء كهنة إنه بيعاملنا كأخواته مش كسلطة وفي كل اجتماعات الكهنة بياخد الأراء وبياخد الكونكلوجة من الأراء ويوافق عليه في الآخر ويتنفذ على الأبرشية كلها الحديث الحقيقي عن محبة أنبا أنجيلس وعن تضحية الأنبا أنجيلس وعن النمو اللي حصل في الأبرشية اللي عمل أنبا أنجيلس يحتاج وقت طويل لكن أنا باختصار بشكر ربنا إن هو رتب إن يكون هو أسقف لندن عشان يتمم المسيرة إلى الأباء ابتدوها من الستينات هو بيكمل المسيرة وماشي على خطى الخدمة التي ترضى الله والخدمة الناجحة أن الله ينجحه شكرا يا سيدنا على محبتك وعلى خدمتك ونيابة عن الأباء الكهنة إحنا فرحانين بوجودك في وسطينا فرحانين بنمو الخدمة وفرحانين بتعبك ولو أن بنشفق عليك لكن بنصلي لك ربنا يزيدك نعمة ويزيدك محبة ويزيدك خدمة لإلهنا المجد دائما أبدا آمين
رب البيت فباطل تعلى البناؤون باسم مجالس الكنائس الابروشيه احب ان اشكر سيدنا لإتاحة الفرصة لي لإلقاء كلمة في هذه الاحتفالية نيابة عن السادة المحترمين ممثلي مجالس الكنائس ومناء الصناديق وهم ذو خبرة كبيرة في خدمة الكنيسة وقادرة شؤونها ونحن تعلمنا منهم الكثير وأنا أشكركم على هذه الثقة الكبيرة. أولاً أحب أن أهنئ نيافة الحبر الجليل الأنبا إنجيلوس أسقف مدينة لندن وتوابعها وأيضاً أهنئ آباء القمامصة والكهنة وأحباء وأخواتي الشعب الأبرشية مباركين على مرور ثلاث سنوات على تأسيس الأبرشية ورسامة سيدنا المحبوب أسقفنا أسقفا عليها بيد صاحب الغبطة والقداسة أبينا الطباوي الأنب... البابا تودروس الثاني وقبل أن نهنئ سيدنا المحبوب نود أن نهنئ أنفسنا أيضا لأن رب المجد تحنن علينا وأعطانا أسقفا ذو حكمة وتدبير وراع صالح يسهر على راحة رعيته وخدمتهم والقيام بإنجازات كثيرة ونشاطات مختلفة ومنها على سبيل المثال وليس الحصر حرص سيدنا, حرص سيدنا على توحيد وتقريب المسافات بين الشعب الأبروشية من خلال إقامة الأيام الروحية وإقامة التماجيد للقديسين في أعيادهم وتشجيع سيدنا على حضور شعب الكنائس في هذه المناسبات والأعياد لنوال البركة وإعطاء فرصة جيدة للتعارف بين شعب الابروشيه. اهتمام سيدنا بخدمه الشباب الشباب باقامه المؤتمرات الروحيه واقامه صلوات التسبيحه في جميع الكنائس وحرص دائما على اجتماعات الطلبه والطالبات الجامعات بصوره مستمره ودوريه وبلاجل الاستفاده الروحيه. صيامه أباء كهنة جدد في عهد سيدنا وهم أبونا أنتوني على مذبح كنيسة مرموس الرسول وأبونا مايكل على مذبح كنيسة السيدة العذراء والشهيد العظيم ماري جرجس بشرق لندن مما أدى إلى استقرار الخدمة ونموها في هذه الكنيسة. وأحب أن أنوه أن الأباء الكهنة الجدد قد تتلمذوا وتعلموا على يد سيدنا وزرع فيهم حب الخدمة والعطاء. وما كما قال الكتاب إله السماء يعطينا نجاح ونحن عبيد نقوم ونبني هذا ما فعله أبينا المحبوب الذي كان بمثابة نحمية هذا الزمان وقام بتوسعات كبيرة في كنائس الأبروشية من بناء وتعمير وكان يزور موقع العمل بنفسه للتشجيع والاهتمام بهذه التوسعات الإنشائية وقد قام أيضا نيافته بشراء دير كبير في منطقة برينت تري وايضا بهذا الدير كنيسه اثريه بتصميم معماري رائع جدا وقد قام نيافته باقامه اول قداس ارثوذكسي بمشاركه جميع الكهنه كانت الابروشيه المباركين. واتكلم ابونا شرود عشم ازاي ربنا ايده كانت بتشتغل وكان ايد ربنا بتعمل في شراء هذه المشروعات. ومن اهداف شراء هذا الدير اقامه الخلوات الروحيه وتنظيم رحلات للكنائس واقامه الاحتفالات بالاعياد هناك لنكون اسره واحده تحت رعايه نيافتهم. ورغم كل الظروف الصعبه التي يمر بها العالم بسبب وباء كورونا حرص سيدنا على اقامه القداس الالهي في موعده في جميع الكنائس حتى تستمر الصلاه على مذابح الكنائس. وكان سيدنا يشارك في الصلاه كل اسبوع من كنيسه مختلفه ويشارك ايضا في درس الكتاب المقدس وتشجيعه الدائم للكهنه للقيام بهذه الدراسات اليوميه للاستفاده الروحيه. واثناء اسبوع الالام اهتم سيدنا باقامه صلوات البصخه المقدسه كامله من جميع الكنائس بمشاركه الاباء الكهنه والشماميسه من خلال فريق عمل ممتاز في مجال التواصل الاجتماعي والتكنولوجيا. بجانب هذا كله اهتم سيدنا بالاجتماع مع لجان الكنائس لتفقد احوال الكنيسه من النواحي الاداريه والتامينيه لسلامه شعب الكنيسه واستقرار الخدمه. وقد كان سيدنا كون سيدنا فريق عمل متكامل من ابناء الكنيسه متخصصين في الشؤون القانونيه والمحاسبيه والاداريه والطبيه وكل ذلك من اجل وجود حلول لاي مشكله تصادف لجان الكنائس. وقد قام ايضا بانشاء فريق خاص بخصوص فيروس كورونا ومكافحته والوقايه منه فريق بايوسز ريسبوند 
جروب وكان سيدنا بيعمل اجتماع مع مع هذا الجروب شبه يومي وبعض الاحيان بيصل الاجتماع لحد منتصف الليل وساعات لحد واحدة الواحدة صباحا وهذا للتواصل بين الكنيسة وبين سيدنا واعطاهم الوقاية والادوات الاحترازية من فيروس كورونا وفي الختام أحب أن أشكركم جميعا على هذه الاحتفالية الرائعة ونطلب من رب المجد أن تكون الاحتفالية القادمة بإذن يسوع مجتمعين جميعا في كدرية ماري جيرجس في ستيفنش مع سيدنا المحبوب الأنبا إنجيلوس ومن أعماق قلوبنا نطلب من ربنا يسوع المسيح الممسك بيمينك أن يسندك ويثبت خطواتك ويبارك حياتك ويقويك على خدمة الإبراشية ورعاية شعبها والرب يديم حبريتك على كرسي الأبرشية سينا عديدة مجيدة وأزمنة سليمة مديدة وإلى مدى الأعوام أذكرنا في صلواتك يا سيد Hi everyone um, We wanted to provide you all with a very quick update on all the wonderful youth services going on in the diocese at the moment uh, We've managed to still stay very busy despite being physically separated from one another which is really really wonderful news Um, firstly, this weekend, St. Mark's have been hosting their annual winter retreat. This year's theme is Out of the Depths, with the final talk of the weekend titled You Are Not Alone, starting at 2 p.m. tomorrow. We also have Focus, which most of you will know as our fortnightly meeting for all the university students in London. The next meeting is this coming Thursday, where we, where we will be learning Coptic in 30 minutes with David Botros. The last talk of this term will then follow on Thursday, the 10th of December. So stay, stay tuned for the details for that talk too. We have also started working on a very exciting project with Exodus Youth Works UK. This UK branch of the original Australian charity was established earlier this year, just before the lockdown and the pandemic kicked in. Um, and the mem it has the members of our very own church community making up the leadership, leadership team. COVID has shaped the work that we have been doing since we started. And this Christmas, we will be joining in the Love Christmas project to send families across the, across the nation um, Christmas boxes for the festive period. Each parish will be involved in their own way. And as members of the parishes, you can choose to either donate to the boxes or to help put them together yourself. This will be a really, really lovely surprise for people who have not had the best year this year. And we hope that it will bring joy to everybody um, as much as possible. We will follow up with more information on this very shortly. Um, so please stay tuned and see how you can help out. A long-standing and crucial service to the homeless, City Mission is still going strong. Volunteers are meeting up in various central London locations every Tuesday evening at 8 p.m. to help feed and to just spend some time with those who are on the streets at the moment. This is a particularly hard time for our brothers and sisters in these circumstances at the moment, given the COVID environment and the setting in of the very cold winter period. Any time or assistance that you can give is always very much appreciated. You will hopefully also all be aware of all the youth services which are going strong in your own individual parishes. There are so many Bible studies and youth meetings which have still been able to continue and we are really able to join in each other's services during this lockdown period and benefit from one another and just stay as one connected diocese more than ever despite the fact that we can't all be together in our physical churches. So we would really encourage you to make the most of this as much as you possibly can. If you have any doubts at all or want more information, please always feel free to get in touch with your JYC members in your church or speak to your fathers and they will have all the information that you need. A lot of these services have their own representatives or have their own Facebook or social media pages where all the links are available. So please do reach out and speak to anybody to give you all the information that you need. God bless. Bishop Angelos, Lord, provide him with prosperity and keep him safe for us whilst being safe in your hands for many years. <laughs>
everyone. Uh, I've been asked to speak about the monthly diocesan Tazbeha service. Um, this has been running since about April of last year, since April 2019. Uh, we've been rotating through the parishes, praying Tazbeha together as one diocese. Um, we begin with Agbeya prayers, and we have a reflection from Sayyidina lasting approximately 30 minutes, followed by midnight praises, which lasts an hour and a half. We pray Coptic, Arabic, and English. And I just wanted to, re to reflect on this service and what it's meant to us for the last year and a half. It really has been an amazing, amazing ministry, which has grown from strength to strength for the last year and a half. And it is actually genuinely the highlight of my month and many people's month. And it's been such a pleasure to rotate through the various parishes and join their congregations uh, to pray Tazbaha together. And within the first year of running the service, we managed to pray with all the parishes in the diocese. And we have just started to begin our second rotation when coronavirus hit and put a halt to everything this year. Um, but hopefully we can get it back together soon, you know, coming out of this pandemic with, with God's grace and get together going, get going together too. Um, it really was gaining a lot of momentum and we were seeing really good increases in numbers in the, as each month passed. Um, I would like to take this opportunity to, to encourage everyone to attend. Um, you know, there's no limit on this. There's no age or you don't have to be a deacon or anything like that. It's all ages, male, men, women, deacons, non-deacons, priests, non-priests, you get the idea. Um, and I'd also like to take this opportunity to plug my uh, SoundCloud account, which we have been uploading um, our recordings up onto SoundCloud uh, every every month. We're trying to upload as much as we can. So if you just search on SoundCloud, Coptic Orthodox Dices of London, you'll get us. But hasn't it be great if you could listen to that and share share that stuff with your friends? And just it's been a really really good ministry, and the fellowship we've gained out of it has been incredible. Uh, just to end, I'd like to say a massive massive thank you to Sayedna. Um, he's been an amazing support throughout this whole service. Uh, I'm genuinely so, so grateful that you approached me uh, about a year and a half ago now saying, let's, uh, let's do Tazbaha once a month in each parish. I have to say, you know, truth be told, it was entirely Sayyidina's idea um, to, you know, get it running once, once a month in different parishes. And it's been a really, really great experience. And the fellowship we've gained out of it has been incredible. So a massive thank you to Sayyidina for his support, for initiating it, for being present at every single one. You know, it's meant the world to us and we really have grown, you know, our fellowship between us has really increased. So watch this space. Each church has its own uh, rep representative to tell you when the dates are. So hopefully when, you know, when we're out of this pandemic, hopefully we can get going again. And please, we'd encourage as many of you to attend as possible. Tune into the, to the stuff on SoundCloud. We're also working on... Um, unifying the Tazbaha in English so we can pray together you know, more consistently. It's already been done with the liturgy, but hopefully we can do this with the Tazbaha too. And just, you know, further unite our diocese as one. And it's been an amazing, amazing opportunity to pray together. So yeah, thank you so much to everyone who comes. Thank you, Sayyidina, for all your commitment to this service. And, you know, like Abun Antonis was saying, you really do include us in everything you do and decide. And we have regular meetings and it's such an honor to serve alongside you. And I look forward to our future services together alongside you, Sayyidina, and my fathers and my brothers and sisters. So thank you very much, um, and God bless. Um, thank you very much, Sayyidina. Thank you for this opportunity to speak um, to, 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 to you about, and to the congregation about what has been happening in the last period of time. If we, uh, I was, like, I'm not very good at speaking in front of lots of people, uh, but so forgive me if I say something out of line. I think the fathers and some of the meetings we have been into it, they are pretty much used to it. So in advance, I'm, I'm, I'm apologizing. Um, when we look at what was happening uh, last year, uh, we start, we're going to start, I'm going to start straight away from uh, November 2019. Uh, we had to say uh, and we had lots of things going around. around. We have on the clergy council and Abuna Shnud and say and Abuna Antonio spoke about the dynamics between us as clergy and, and say in the midst of us. And then we had the CYM. And even though uh, th that picture is not very pretty, but that's the best I could do. But we had all of the Coptic Youth Mission. You have the council second treasures and you have the parishes. You got. Uh, Lots of things going around as well. You have the month as Sam spoke, clerical council, uh, clerical college, ritual groups, knowledge groups. There are all lots of services were running uh, all the way up to November 2019 from the beginning of Sayyidna uh, 
uh, being with us as the Bishop of, uh, of London. And then we had lots of uh, plans about, okay, what you're going to do next year. And uh, of course, uh, God's plans were completely different. So we had lots of plans about uh, rituals, meetings, uh, all sorts of things. But like, like I said, uh, when God's plan came or God allowed this to happen, lots of things had changed. However, we had to adapt as well. Um, so I'm going to show you roughly what was going on. So this is, like I was saying earlier on, this is what was running before. But in order for us to continue to run services, um, we had to change a few things and we had to add lots of other groups, which I'm going to speak to about them uh, shortly. But uh, the best thing is, I remember a phone call between Sayyidina and myself. I was coming back from Wales and Sayyidina was saying, like, uh, like, it's easy to stop doing everything. It's easy to close. It's easy to do lots of things. But I don't want, to do, I want, I don't want this to happen. Let's try and see if we can continue ourselves. Let's try and see if we can actually um, not stop to help people. And let's not, let's not stop to, to offer our sacrifice and like oblation on the altar. Yeah. Um, and so we thought, OK, let's try and do things. So, all of a sudden, we start having these groups that we have talked about. So we have something called the Diocesan Response Group, um, which is, if you look at all the other groups, it's pretty much the same concept. So Sayyidina uh, chose a, a group of people, one from each, one or two from each parish, who are able to see, okay, what can we do in terms of policies and, and guidelines? So you have people who will read what the government is saying, of course, Saima has his own contacts as well. We will come together and we we'll bring everything to the clergy council to discuss it. And as Abu Antonio said, Saima, in his humility, he kept saying, I am, my vote is like, or my voice is like any one of you. And sometimes we would go for hours because, not because we don't want to make a decision, it's just we have so much that we want to bring together. So the Diocesan Response Group got created at the time to try and familiarize everything and bring things back together. But that wasn't enough. So we needed something called the Diocesan Digital Platform Group. Uh, because obviously with lockdown and with not being able to be with each other, it was very difficult to still want to be with each other. So the only medium at the time is to move to a, a, a digital platform and I'm gonna leave Karim to go through some of the stats, but as you can imagine, pretty much every single service has not stopped throughout this pandemic. So, which is amazing work, and yeah, I credit to this group as well. But that wasn't enough, so we wanted to add more. So we had to get some medical input. So we had a dozen medical response group, who actually like a group of, uh, of doctors coming together and I forgot to mention each and every one of these groups, whether I managed to put like a name or even I couldn't, um, uh, there is one or two of the priests are in there. So we are, everyone is involved in all of these groups and you have the people coming and every come, everything comes back to the clergy council trying to make a decision, which wasn't easy. Sometimes we meet up two, three times a week, like Abu Antonio is saying, sometimes even till midnight we'll be talking. Then okay, manage eventually to make, a, to make a decision. That decision has to go back again to all of these groups because you don't want to make a decision and that's it. So you have to go back to all of these groups. And then we had to create in each and every parish what we call the parish response groups, which you probably have seen them when we, people start to come back on the 4th of July, back to, to attend liturgies. You have people at the door, you, you will find the church is organized. You have the one-way system, you have people who are um, wearing masks, provided face covering, and they're all trying to help you and to help everyone to go back to pray in as much as we can in the most possible way. So as you can imagine, this took lots of time and effort, and it wasn't an easy thing to try and just simple thing, try to pray Holy Week in pretty much half of it online, half of it is the church, some of the priests or the clergy was in the church, the deacons were at home. It, it was just very tiring, but 
through the glory and the grace of God, we have managed to, put, to go through all of this. However, I hope so. <laughs> I'm not going to get yeah, in trouble after, but Sayyidina doesn't write, write uh, it's never, yeah, we have to add more and more. So we said, Khalas, uh, let's do something. So at the beginning, Sayyidina said, okay, we, like there's opportunity to buy this convent and we, we all, Sayyidina took us all to the convent there and we took a picture there that was early this year before the, the pandemic. And we said, okay, we want to acquire it and purchase it. And eventually we managed to do that. But Khalas is Sayyidina, we have enough? No. We're going to have two amazing uh, fruits, more into the into the diocese, that are actually going to take the service in the different parishes and throughout the, the diocese to another gear and another level. So in the, like, if you, I don't know if you guys have organized, have ever organized people like an event when you were, like we ordain priests, but ordain priests with limited amount of, uh, of people trying to make everyone happy at the same time, in a pandemic, try to make it safe. It was very, very difficult. However, nothing has stopped actually Sayyidina or the dice to continue to serve. We're going to continue to do Coptic festival and we're going to try and make everything as far as we can yeah, back to some sort of normality as possible. We're going to start, like Marina said, Exodus UK. And so on, like I, the problem is my computer could not fit everything. So all I'm saying is last year, even though it was tough, but so much has been happening. Um, I'm gonna show you this picture, but that's not probably good enough. So I'm gonna share with you. This is pretty much where we are right now. We have, thank God, seven uh, physical parishes. We have the ecclesiastical uh, committees and forums. You have the liturgical group, you have the hymnology group, Sunday school curriculum. In the midst of all of that, we have managed to, to translate and set up all of primary group, uh, primary Sunday school, primary services. Now we are doing the secondary. We've done the pre-servant and the servants group and the, and the youth meeting all in one year. If you look at the administrative branch, we have the clergy council, you have diocesan board of trustees and the section and treasurer that uh, Magdi has spoken about. Now you talk about the other ministries from the from the diocese. We have Exodus, my church, the Zbaha, the Coptic Medical Society, all of this code, which is the apologetic, and they had a, a lovely um, conference uh, again, all online last a uh, couple of months ago. All of these just happening in a year full of challenges. No, we have to do more. We have to have oasis and. Oasis at a service that started a couple of years ago, but continues throughout the pandemic for retired and semi-retired people. Clinical council, uh, pre-marriage courses, youth, youth ministry. And this is just to show you, this is what the youth ministry at the bottom is looking like. All of these things have been happening even throughout that time when we are trying to just as much as we can to survive. So, is that all? No, there's so much behind the scene. Yeah, Sayyidina with the fathers created a fund that can help people who are Muslim have been struggling throughout COVID with their work and things like that. And the Persians as well have started to do the same as well. Lots of things has happened to try and help people. And none of this has been yeah, uh, on, yeah, without the, the blessing and the grace of God. So, in, the, in, the, in summary, I think it's really truly really what uh, St. Paul said, for we are his workmanship. It's true, we have, work, we have been workmanship in the hands of God. He created all of this work. None of this could have happened without definitely the wisdom of Sayyidina, but as well all of the work of all of the people around him and around the church and the faithfulness of the service servants in all of these services. These services, by the way, are just a glimpse. You still have the advocacy, advocacy work and all other things that say that, yeah, God bless him, Abdullah Hafiz Ali has been working through all of this. Thank you very much, Ya Rab, and God, for all of the things you have been doing. Thank you, Sayyidina, for your guidance and support. And thank you, my father, the priest, for such an amazing and tough year, because I think without that, 
bond between the clergy with each other and Sayyidina, I think it will be very difficult that we have uh, achieved what we have achieved so far. So thank you very much, Sayyidina, and a happy anniversary. Okay, peace and grace, beloved uh, Sayyidina and uh, my fathers, okay, and everyone. Um, I was asked already to give already a quick brief about already the digital service family. So I thought already of putting already some lovely faces and lovely pictures already on the screen. Uh, you will see already your representatives already in the church, okay, in each and every parish across the diocese. And already most of all, already thanks to Sayedna for his guidance and blessings and Abuna Mina and Abuna Moros and Abuna Michael. Um, going through already the day to day, okay, so you can see already some uh, laughing faces, okay, <laughs> on the Easter day. Uh, after the, uh, the Holy Week and already the services uh, that we were all blessed having it. And as you see here already Mario, okay, he was still already not yet already a priest, so you can just already take already a pic, okay, compared to this picture, okay, and after. Um, with the blessings already of Sayedna and already the support of Abu Namina and already the priests across the parishes, uh, this already is already a quick start, okay, on the services and the total number of hours on audio, video and screen share over the past period of time uh, during the pandemic period. So we are talking about 36,000 hours of audio on conference calls and meetings on the school services, retreats and liturgies, vespers. And you will see around 31,000 hours of video and around 4,000 hours already of screen share. So uh, the numbers are quite interesting, okay? And thanks to God for all his blessings and with the guidance of Sayedna that we continue to continue our services. Going forward, okay, we had already a lovely uh, app, okay, on the Android devices and Apple, which is my church app. And this was already our um, uh, uh, part already of interacting with the congregations, make sure that everyone is already is registered already on the app uh, for pastoral care. And at the same time, when we open for the lectures for the congregation, uh, everyone was able already to book already a uh, place, already a slot already in liturgy in, in his parish. In addition, when we had already uh, the move ready for the Sunday school services as well, uh, it was another functionality which was added to my church app. So the servant can take already attendance for their boys and girls and already they follow up already with the visitation afterwards. So uh, great app, okay, it was wonderful functionality behind and great effort already from Ashraf, Theo and all the digital team. Um, moreover, okay, the prayers meeting, okay, across the diocese already was already there and continuing, okay, last but not least, we had already one last Thursday, okay, for already a prayers meeting for our sisters and brothers in Armenia, Ethiopia and Eritrea, and it was a lovely prayers meeting, and in most of the churches already and the parishes, okay, we have already daily prayers meeting or weekly ones for the servants on different categories for Sunday school use, and other services, homeless services and others. On the Dyson monthly Tazbeha, okay, this has already, uh, we continued having it already with the blessings already of all the servants from the different parishes. And again, it was a great blessing to have uh, this kind already of midnight praises, okay, uh, with his guidance of Archbishop Angelus. Um, what was already quite unique this year as well is the Holy Week, okay. And uh, here already are some pictures uh, already from the all different parishes. It was already great that we had the opportunity to continue praying, okay, and uh, uh, service as usual, okay, with deacons remotely. It was a little bit different than every year. However, we are all blessed already having uh, the digital platform and everyone able to connect remotely and share in the services. Uh, moreover, when we started Sunday school services, okay, it was already quite an interactive one. I just managed already to capture some of the photos of the Sunday school classes where you see everyone smiling, already interacting. So it was already a good opportunity to still already connect, okay, with our boys and girls and make sure that already the bonding is there. 
uh, as well as some of the churches, they had already some initiatives, okay, with people already staying at home or working from home, which is Bible Marathon. We had already in different parishes already Arabic Bible Marathon and English Bible Marathon. Others already uh, finished already around already uh, all the New Testament, half of the Old Testament, and other churches already are already as well already capturing and going forward. So it's actually the, a great opportunity already as well to connect with the Bible during such tough times. Uh, there was already a marriage preparation course, which was started before already the COVID period and the pandemic. Uh, we managed as well to continue already providing the service across the diocese, okay, for our lovely couples. And already during the COVID period, we had some of the couples already, they got married as well. So they continued the course while they are married, which was already quite an interesting one. Um, last but not least, already the online retreats, okay. Uh, the COVID thing didn't stop us already across all the parishes to do already uh, uh, retreats for our boys and girls and the uni graduates and postgraduates. And here you can see already some of the flyers, okay, across the parishes. And it was quite an interesting one where we had already around 150 or average 200 already per uh, a retreat already joining. On the secondary side, the average was around 100, which was already quite interesting to have everyone on board and still already connecting to the church. Uh, youth meetings as well, okay, it continued already between Archangel Michael, St. Mark Church and the other churches, okay, every church already was trying their best already to be able to connect to the boys and girls and the youth and to make use already of all the services and the digital platforms, so as the family meetings. Last but not least, the apologetic spiritual days and retreat. We managed to have already one spiritual day and it was already under the topic of reason for hope. And it was a lovely, interesting one, already an uplifting for most of the servants and for the attendees as well. And last but not least, we had already another conference, okay, with Dr. George Basilius from the US about pain and suffering. And there was lots of benefit already to everyone who attended and it's all recorded on YouTube. Again, this is just already a very quick glimpse already about the digital service and uh, feel free already to contact any of the representatives already for your, for your church. And thanks Sayedna, Otsabuna Mina, Otsabuna Michael and Otsabuna Marcus, okay, for all your help and support. We couldn't have done it without your guidance, Sayedna. Thank you. God bless. Uh... Ah uh -huh. 
Son and the Holy Spirit, one God. It's such an incredible blessing and pleasure to be with you all. And I'm so thankful for everything I've seen because as you've seen, it's all happened with the grace of God first and foremost, but also with so many people doing so much. We've had extraordinary blessings this year. We've had a wonderful opportunity to serve together and to serve one another. We've had so much happen that we couldn't have even dreamt of, the things that have happened because God has empowered us to respond to what are very extraordinary times. Before we start, I just want to take a moment's silence with you to remember all those who have passed away this year from our own community and from other communities as we also remember those who have lost them, who are mourning loved ones, and those who are struggling through this time in a variety of ways. So for a moment, let us put our heads to down and just pray together. Having said that, 
there is also much to give thanks for. Thanks for life and health. Thanks for fellowship. Thanks for the fact that we are here together. And although we are separated each in our own home, in our own place, we can still come together. It's no secret to any of you that I am incredibly inspired by Nehemiah the prophet and by the extraordinary work that was done for rebuilding the walls and the city. And although we were not starting from ruins, this year we have all been facing an incredible enemy. An enemy that can't be seen with a naked eye. An enemy we don't understand. An enemy no one was ready for. We all had plans. We had plans in our diocese, in our parishes. The world had plans. And yet this enemy has come to be a formidable enemy. And yet, this hasn't stopped us. Not because of our own strength, but by the grace of God that is in us and the inspiration that he gives us and the fellowship that we share in him and the gifts, the incredible gifts he has given to each and every one of us. When Nehemiah decided that he was going to rebuild the wall, he did so because there was an enemy around that wanted to come in and destroy. And as this enemy saw the wall being rebuilt, there was a more aggressive approach to ridicule and to wanting to break it down. And if we go to chapter 4 of the book of Nehemiah, starting from verse 13, we read, Therefore I positioned the men behind the lower parts of the wall, at the openings, and I set the people according to their families, with their swords, with their spears, with their bows. And I looked and arose and sent to the nobles, to the leaders, to the rest of the people, do not be afraid of them. Remember the Lord, great and awesome, and fight for your brethren, your sons, your daughters, your wives, and your houses. He spoke to everyone, to the nobles, the leaders, and the rest of the people, to everyone. Each person had a role to play. And if we translate that into our own situation, the laity, the servants, the clergy, the young, the old, everyone, everyone banded together and we worked together. And he set them so that they were each building before their home, each building one part of the wall. And as we've seen today in these incredible uh, demonstrations, we've had our parish groups, our servants, We've had our youth ministries, we've had our hymnology group, our response group, our digital group, our medical group. We've had our oasis ministry and youth ministry. We've had Exodus. We've had the clergy council. We've had the deacons in the churches and the servants in the churches, young and old, each building their part of the wall. Each faithful in their work. And when you put that together, and that wonderful diagram that Abuna Mina showed us earlier about the various things going on in the diocese, each one of those sections has that family working in it. And it's only by doing that that we close the gaps in the wall. Verse 16, so it was from that time that half of my servants worked at construction while the other half held spears and shields and bows, wore armor, and leaders were behind all the house of Judah. Those who built the wall and those who carried the burdens loaded themselves so that with one hand they worked the construction and the other hand they held the weapon. Each one of the builders with his sword girt to his side. Think about it. The work and the prayers. We have maintained prayers on these altars in each one of your parishes. The fathers have been raising the prayers for us. We have been praying together when we can in the churches, when we can't remotely as we're doing today. And yet the prayers have not stopped. I have heard of so many prayer meetings in the parishes. Some parishes have prayer meetings every night. 
We've heard of many people in the diocese becoming sick. And the first thing that happens is that people rally and have a prayer meeting for them. We've had miracles happen because of that. We've had people gathered to pray together. People who may not even know the person have prayed. We've had that prayer. What is that prayer? That prayer is these swords and spears and shields. That's what protects us. That's why our prayers need to be unceasing for one another. And no matter what happens, we'll continue to pray. There was a wonderful uh, account of um, one of the rulers of Egypt who was persecuting Christians, who closed down all the churches and said Christians should stay at home. And as he went through the streets, he started to hear sounds and singing, and it was very powerful. And he, asks, he, he asked his, his guards what was happening. He said that these were the Christians praying in their homes because their churches were closed. He went back to his court and immediately issued a decree that all the churches be reopened. And when his counselors asked him, they said, that's a very strange thing to do. Why did you do it? He said, because I noticed that when I closed the church, I created a church in every home. And that's what we saw happen this year, a church in every home, a sanctuary in every home, prayers in every home. When we can gather, it is wonderful. When we can't, we continue to pray. And so it was that those prayers, those spears and swords and shields didn't stop. But the construction didn't stop. The Austin response group, the parish response group, the digital group, the medical group didn't stop working as well for all of us, for all of you, for all of us. They work tirelessly. They work without bounds. They've given so much of their time. And so we have it that we had prayers and we had work. The servants in every Sunday school class and youth meeting. The clergy in their Bible studies and prayer meetings. The groups that have been serving others. Those who have been in their homes unable to go and having people go and take things for them. This is the work that has continued. This is the work that has been part of this extraordinary year. You know, as Abu Amina said, the easiest thing would have been, let's just stop everything. Let's just sit at home. But we've had conversations about how do we take communion? How do we do hymnology? How do we pray if the churches are empty? How do we pray if there are no deacons in the churches? How do we make the spaces safe and healthy? How do we look after each other? How do we make sure everyone has op an opportunity to be at church when we can be? How do we protect people's privacy? How do we provide continuing youth ministry and Sunday school and seniors ministry and Bible studies? When the churches are open, how do we have baptism safely? How do we have weddings safely? How do we gather safely once we can? Nothing has been easy this year, and yet it hasn't stopped. Because of the grace of God, and because of the extraordinary gift of those whom he has put in place to serve us all. And I am so thankful for you, each and every one of you. I'm so thankful for the gifts that God has given you, but I'm also so thankful for your faithfulness in using them. We've, we've brought out such incredible gifts in people. Such wonderful things. Gifts that people didn't even realize they had. And now they do. And they use them. And a second and third and fourth tier of servants. This is all because God has strengthened us and allowed us to work together. I'm so thankful to each and every one of you and for each and every one of you. I'm thankful for our fathers, the priests. They have been an incredible group to work with. I'm thankful for their honesty and their faithfulness. And some of our conversations have not been easy, but they've never been unkind. Some of our decisions have not been easy, but they have never been a source of conflict. 
we talk, we pray, we decide. And then our groups, the groups that have tried to implement all of this, the fullness of church, each and every one of you, the stewards and the volunteers who have greeted us at doors of church, and I've been so thankful to visit each and every parish and to see the wonderful work of those volunteers who put themselves at risk. Those who have been praying behind the scenes, I just want to thank you. And what we are celebrating during this year is nothing short of a miracle. But you are part of that miracle because of what God has done for, with, and through you. I want to conclude with one of my all-time favorite verses. That the work is great and extensive, and we are separated far from one another on the wall. Wherever you hear the trumpet, rally to us there, our God will fight for us. This verse was supposed to be our theme for the year, and we had no idea what was going to come of this year. And yet, this verse has been the source of the success of this year. Each time we gathered and there was trouble, a trumpet sounded and we gathered. We saw that in our remarkable uh, Holy Week. Every time someone had trouble streaming, they sounded the trumpet and everyone gathered. With our clergy, the trumpet sounded and they gathered. With our servants, experience. We wanted to make sure that across the diocese, everyone had the same experience. No matter how large or how small the church, how old or how new, we wanted to make sure that everyone had the same experience. And there was such an outpouring of love. Each, try, each time that trumpet sounded, there were people there. Each time a trumpet sounded in a home where someone was unable to leave, unable to buy their own medication or their own food, unable to do their own chores, unable to go to their hospital visit on their own, the trumpet sounded and there were people there. Every time something happened, God did fight for us because we sounded the trumpet and we gathered for one another. How did this happen? It happened because of what Nehemiah said to his people in, in, his, in, in, the, um, in the book of Nehemiah, chapter 2, verse 20. The God, of him, the God of heaven himself will prosper us. Therefore, we, his servants, shall arise and build. God wants to prosper us. God wants to support us. God wants to hold us in his hand and keep us safe. And he inspires us and he gives us gifts and he puts us in each other's lives and he brings us together and unifies us and molds us. And with that, we arise and we build when we build and we fulfill his will. Our sanctification, our life, and above all, our salvation. Before we finish, we have a wonderful presentation uh, that's been arranged by Mina Pastoros and uh, Karim, could you please play that for us?
كده Thank you once again for your love and I am so incredibly thankful to God for this opportunity and this blessing to serve you. I have been thanked quite a lot today but it is I who must thank you. I feel incredibly privileged and blessed to serve you all. I could not have thought of a greater gift from God than to be able to serve you and to be able to work alongside you all. God bless you and I look forward to another wonderful year. I mean we didn't expect this year and we have no idea what to expect next year but we do know if God's love and his strength and his grace. And until I see you in your parishes which I will very soon, I wish you every blessing. Thank you for joining us tonight. امين الليل يا ذكرى تريك ايوك اليوم لماتي كان يجيك استوسيون استونيون امين تنوش بولن جوي موجي اوبن جوي سيسوس بخريسوس اسموني سيتين النيس الماري بك ناين انتك اريدي وين سوبتن بك لاوس سوتين مونو وناين ان ابيتشي اتخريس اموي سيستيم اتوي بنت امشي سي Dictimet kello in te ya kubi no gin ha in te maso sala bi katir so ten te da bi ti so ve ya in te solo mum bi ebne man barakni tum bi ya da bi jen ni apostolo se choy se ve are bom kani meta o erat min benyot et taiot en ar sheref se baba aba ta wandros min benyot en ebeskobos aba angelos no ten te ve meta kro o di jen no esrono se na ni موسيقى <تصفيق> 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 Christos Pennuti Amin Asashobi O King of Peace, grant us your peace, bestow your peace upon us and forgive our sins. For yours is the kingdom, the power, the majesty, and the blessings. Conclude for us these prayers in this gathering, Lord. Bless this year to come. Hear us and we pray thankfully. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and glory, forever and ever. Amen. <laughs>